All right, we're gonna do a video where I just jump right into it here. Uh, someone actually pointed out that they really liked that I didn't waste any time explaining. So here we're just doing a blade sharpening. You can see right here what I'm holding up is a balancer. So you don't wanna take off too much on either side. This is the sharpening stone here. I'm just gonna check it for any type of damage or any pivots or pits. And uh, that can mess things up. Uh, some people don't mind it, but I do. We're gonna use a drill on the number two setting. Now, when I start out, I'm gonna show you the number one setting, and you can see that I barely have any control over it. For some reason, at the faster speeds, I've just found that it's easier. We're gonna put use a level to make sure that we have a level surface, okay? We can actually see what the blade's doing. We're also gonna wear some gloves. Now, I did this without gloves before. I bit myself pretty good with the grind. Uh, it does tend to jump around a little bit. And then right there, I'm showing you the blade that I've already sharpened and then this more rusty blade that has, it has a season on it. You know, they should be sharpened every, every season. Now, you might notice that it's the fall and you're like, why are you, <laughs> why are you sharpening a blade at the end of the fall? Uh, we recently did some hydro seeding and, uh, not hydro seeding, we, we did an aeration and overseed and the, you know the lawn came back we had a really bad drought this year and it was so bad that most of my lawn died and we overseeded it's come back quite a bit now let's get into sharpening remember this is the slow speed you're going to notice it jumping off the edge i'm going to show you right here how it just falls right off the edge and yeah again for some reason i can't keep it under control on the one setting or the slower setting with the drill so it just kind of hops off and I don't have much luck with, uh, you know, keeping it under control. And then I don't show it like I'll put some, I'll put something up on the screen, but I switch to the number two setting with a faster rotation speed on the drill. And I'm just able to control it so much better. And um, so another thing is people, when they're sharpening this, you know, they'll, they'll only say, oh, it only takes so much off, this, that, the other thing. You do want to try to keep track of how much you're taking off at any given point. And you just kind of want to, you know, try to go, you know, in a, in a one action out away from the center of that blade. And you want to make sure that you've cleaned up the... Uh, blade as much as possible where you don't see any rust spots anything like that but of course you got to take material off to do that um, the other thing here is this blade is obviously been through a season and you're going to have some stuff caked on there that might affect your uh, balancing so you might want to clean it off i didn't for this video and again i've already fired up the faster speed you can actually see it moving here and it's just basically I just pull against what it's trying to it tries to run away from you and you just want to pull as you do it and for some reason at the faster speed the, the pull is just more consistent and it still falls off a little bit at the edge but it's more manageable and you're going to notice that when you use this device um, to to the point that uh, you, you know you'll kind of know when it's about to jump off and you'll be able to pull back now here you're just going to see, I'm going to use the front of this grinder to just hit the back of this blade because I really want to have a sharp blade. And it, you know, I'll clean up the face of this blade and I'll turn around. I just want to make sure that that uh, blade on the back is also kind of cleaned up to where it has a little bit of a beveled edge. And you want to monitor how sharp it is. You want to monitor uh, how much you're taking off because when you go to balance it, you'll notice that even a little bit can throw the whole thing off. And I'm gonna show you an example of that in just a couple seconds. All right, and here, you know, we're just gonna clean off the surface, our workspace, we're just gonna clean it up a bit. We wanna make sure that there's nothing that can cause this to be unlevel. We're gonna check the sharpness of the blade. I mean, that was pretty good. Now we're gonna use our balance. Um, or a balancer to make sure that we take we took off an even amount on either side and we're going to use our level to make sure we're on a level surface looks good to me so now we're going to take that level away we're going to put the well move my gloves out of the way and any type of obstruction you don't obviously don't want that in the way so i took that box out of there 
and now we're going to see if we can level it and you can see on the left side I haven't taken off enough the right side is a little lighter so that's not level it means we're gonna to have to go back and take off more you just want to keep track of which side you're taking off uh, more material it doesn't take much to throw the whole thing off balance So here I'm just removing a little bit more from that side, uh, just making sure that everything stays nice and sharp. Uh, I lift up here, I think I grind a little bit more off the back, and then we put it back on the balancer. Alright, so this time we're going to put it on, we didn't even go three times on this one. And you can see that that's now pretty level, so it's uh, not bad at all, we're going to go ahead and get it thrown on the lawnmower and uh, we're also going to clean up the lawnmower. Alright, so you can see here that I let this get caked up pretty good. I wanted to do this for the video. I uh, did a little bit of neglecting, which obviously saves me time. But uh, cleaning this up, it really can be a pain, so you really want to stay on top of it. You can use a Teflon spray just to keep it from sticking, but you really want to clean it off after every use because you really don't want to be scraping the under barrel, like uh, the under part of this too much. Now, you're going to see that I took that off. You're going to want a 14 millimeter socket, uh, a scraper, and then I use some clean wipes, some heavy duty clean wipes for the garage, just so I can get things wet and kind of move things out of there, see what else I have to clean up and sometimes it even does the job of loosening things up. You can get the under part of this wet, but just like contact wet, use like a wet rag. I wouldn't spray it with a hose. And then, you know, we're gonna continue to go through this and just keep cleaning it out, scraping, cleaning it out, scraping. And this is gonna help to, uh, turn, uh, uh, pr prevent resistance, I should say. So, um, you know, resistance from the uh, blade from tossing that into the bag and it just uh, you don't it just uses more battery the more things get caked on now it should be noted that you can use a teflon spray silicone spray um, for the bottom of this tray. I'm not going to show that because I don't really use it that often. I usually just clean right away. I haven't really noticed much of a difference when it is on uh, keeping the grass off. So I usually do this procedure um, right after I'm done mowing the lawn and then that way I don't have to deal with it like I'm doing right now. Like I said, I neglected it because I wanted to show you how much it could cake on, how much comes off, and then the difficulty of just getting it off. I mean, this is probably 45 minutes worth of work and you can see it's not easy. I'm, and sometimes I'm taking chunks of the plastic tray off and you don't wanna keep doing that. So again, you can do the Teflon spray. Um, I usually have never had to use it so long as I keep up with it. If you don't want to keep up with it and you just want to give it a quick wipe, I would recommend making sure that this tray be as clean as possibly can before you proceed any further.
All right, and getting ready to wrap that up. We're going to start mowing the lawn. We're just going to make sure that we have two fully charged batteries. You can see that I have a fast charger here and the Ego charger that takes, I think, about 45 minutes to an hour and a half to charge two batteries. <clears throat> that being said, um, I do have a pretty big front lawn or, or lawn altogether. It's about 15,000 square feet. I'm able to do all that with two batteries. Maybe I'm wrong on the measurements, but that's what the uh, lawn company I had come in and told me. The first battery will do the bulk of the front lawn. It'll do an area by the mailbox that's uh, also near a wooded area. It'll do the side and then it'll do about eight stripes. So eight times me going in the uh, back and forth in the back lawn before I get a red flashing light. Now because of that red flashing light, I usually just switch out to the second battery straight away once I get to the backyard. Now guys, this lawn was completely dead. We had a really severe drought here in New Hampshire and past few weeks we've been getting lots and lots of rain. I did um, aerate and overseed. And if you look at what that does to the lawn, remember this lawn was completely dead due to a drought and now it's come back. And the Ego, it's, it's a very thick lawn now. It's, um, it's not ideal, a lot of clover. There are a lot of weeds, but you know, it is starting to come back and the Ego does very well with it, especially when these maintenance cycles are maintained, especially when you're um, sharpening the blades, especially after fresh seed being uh, planted and then um, top of sharpening the blades, just making sure that that bottom tray is just all cleaned out. Guys, that was the video of me sharpening um, the Ego lawnmower blade and me cleaning the bottom tray. If you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw, you know what to do, hit the thumbs down button. Guys, we do have uh, better content coming on the way. We recently invested in a GoPro 11 for more of this content. And then, of course, we'll be updating our webcam and uh, that making OBS a little bit better than the 14-year-old webcam that I have. Guys, you have a good day.